It's off. One second last tune-up for the hometown side before the Norwasa playoffs come to town next Friday. It's the Fort Francis Muskies hosting the Beaver Bray Broncos live here on home TV, brought to you by Homeland Financial. Good evening, everybody. Joey Payer with you on the call here tonight. So glad you could join us. An interesting matchup between a Muskies team that thought it might need to win this game tonight to clinch first place, and a Beaver Bray team, which actually saved Muskies the trouble this past uh, Sunday night as they defeated the Red Lake Rams, who were the only team who had a shot at overtaking the Muskies for first place in Norwasa. Beaver Bray coming away with the victory, and that clinched first place for the Muskies. Well, them having to lift a finger on that one. Not sure the Muskies will be in a thankful mood here though tonight. They want to keep their win streak going five in a row coming into this one in Norwasa play. Haven't lost since December 8th in a shootout loss to the Sioux North Warriors. The Broncos coming in again off of that win. They're sitting with a four and five record right now, sitting in third place, or sorry, fourth place in the Norwasa standings. Muskies 7-0-1 mark in conference play right now. Muskies with the puck in the Beaver Bray zone. The shot there by Max Hansen's blocked. Engie gets back the rebound. Laplante's got it, top of the left circle. Cross ice pass, shot by Bill Eisen. Scores! They're starting it early tonight, folks. Ashton Veldheisen finds the five hole on starting goaltender James Sinclair of the Broncos. And the black and gold quickly out to the one nothing lead. Nice pass across ice by Laplante to find Veldheisen all alone at the side. And he fired it home. Sinclair got a piece of it, but not enough as it squirted through the five hole. And the Fort Francis Muskies quickly on top, one nothing. So it is Ashton Veldeisen getting the goal, the assist, assist to Clyde Laplante and Taryn Enge at the 102 mark. And Fort Francis gets the icebreaker here tonight at the Ice for Kids Arena. Broncos now looking to regroup, get the momentum back. Looking to move it out of their zone. Good forechecking though by the Muskies. They take over in the neutral zone. Thrown back in by Aiden Jean. To the line, Willem Kirk now, he works against a checker, sends it to the center. The backhand shot saved by Sinclair. Good chance in tight for Fort Francis on that one. It was Ashton Armstrong with the opportunity. Armstrong with a big Saturday night effort in the border bench battle clinching 5-3 win over the International Falls Broncos. Armstrong was three points in that game. Muskies now. Inside the zone, Griffin Webb fans on it, gets another shot, that deflects wide. Goes to the sideboards, Mosbeck, ooh, he lays a huge hit there on Jake Perron. Perron slow to get up, he leaves his stick, he's gonna head to the bench. Looks like he might be favoring something in the upper body area. Sorry, make that number 15, Hunter Horgan. Horgan felt the blow effects of that huge hit by Mosbeck. And Horgan to the bench, hopefully he's gonna be okay. Got offside called against Beaver Bray. 2.24 gone here in the opening period. Muskies one, Broncos nothing. Out now for the Muskies. It is the line of Ozzie Hansen along with Blake Krieger and Jack Davis. Galen Grenier back at the point. Oh, look. Along with Taron Engie. Pass set up ice, racing after it is Krieger. He's got it on the right wing side. Centering Pavid, cleared away by Alex Johnston. Puck comes towards the front of the net. Johnston picks it up. He'll go off the glass and out down the ice. No icing on the play. Grenier, he's gonna have to hustle here. I guess the Bronco four checker. Number 21, not in the starting lineup card. We'll get that name for you by the second period. Here's Krieger with it now. 
Krieger. His shot high on Sinclair and the save. Rebound picked up by the Broncos, but they turn it over. LaPlante gets it to Veldheisen, but now the Broncos come away with it and start up ice, dump it into the zone, and then they complete the change. Muskies with a puck in their own end. Looking to move it forward now. On the left wing side, that one's intercepted. Muskies get it back, set it up the center, tip it into the zone. Broncos will take over there. Compton's got it. He'll go cross ice, slapped into the zone by Motlong, and he'll go off for a change. Muskies with it in their own zone. Starting up ice, it's Max Hansen down the left wing side. Hansen works into the zone, has it tipped off his stick. Muskies will pick up the loose puck for a second, trying to keep it in. Broncos, though, should clear it. They do. Sent out of the zone by Compton. And it's going to be an icing call against Beaver Bray. 4-0-2 gone in the first period. The goal by Ashton Veldheisen, putting the Muskies in front, one to nothing. Second last regular season game for the Muskies. They'll complete the regular schedule next Tuesday night, 7 o'clock, here at Ice for Kids Arena against the St. Thomas Aquinas Saints. Here's Webb with a hard shot from the point. Saved by the goaltender, and he was bad to the bone on that shot as the music continued to play on. Not going to sell out my booth mate here, though. No names mentioned. Here's a shot. Armstrong high and over top of the net. That def went off the glass and into the netting. I think the faceoff will come, unless it was tipped. No, we'll stay in the Broncos zone. So deflection. Or was it? Oh, we're going to bring it outside, yeah. Armstrong put it up into the netting by himself off that deflection off the glass. So face off outside the Broncos blue line with 4.18 gone here in the first. Muskies send it into the zone. Kirk doing the honors. Racing back after into it for it is Aiden Jean. Jean's got it. Left corner. He leaves it. Puck centered in front. Bouncing dangerously. Kirk going hard to the net trying to tip at home. Sinclair able to jump on that one and hold on for the faceoff with 4.33 gone here in the first. This is the regular season finale for Beaver Bray. So they're going to have an eight day break before they got to play again. And that will be in the semifinals here in Fort Francis next Friday. The new format for the Rawasa playoffs this year. It's going to be all held here in Fort Francis, both boys and girls playoffs. One game semifinals, one game championship finals. So no series this year. Decision made to cut some travel costs, cut down on some extra playing time, and have the teams a little more rested. Whoever ends up heading to the OFSA All Ontario Provincial Championships, March 17th to 21st in Brooklyn, Ontario. Muskies move the puck into their own zone. Griffin Webb's got it. He's being watched by Dingwall. Webb off the boards, up to center. That puck's knocked back into the Broncos zone by Beaver Bray. Back to get it there is Griffin Ratcliffe. He sends it around the boards. That's stopped up by Ozzie Hansen. Hansen tries to get around his man. Caught. Johnson picks it up, but it's stolen by the Muskies. Centered in front. Sinclair tips that away. Puck bounces high in the air. Hansen collides with two Broncos. And a glove hand pass called against the Muskies. Hansen got hit by two Broncos. He was the only man left standing. But in, doing, in holding his ground, he also gloved the puck towards his line mate. That brought about the faceoff. 5.51 gone here in the first. Winning the draw is Hansen. Set off the boards into the Broncos zone. Beaver Bray moves it back out. Compton tips it ahead. Grenier back there. He quick pass up the ice. Here is Davis with it. Davis. He works his way into the right corner. Leaves it. Now Grenier at the right point. His shot. That's just wide. Comes to the left side. Ozzie Hansen with the puck. He'll send it toward the net. He's trying to find Krieger on the back door, but that was intercepted by Compton. Davis picks it up. He's bodied there by Van de Wettering. Now moves it over to Kemper. Kemper's tied up along the boards. Van de Wettering 
Tries the other way, hit by Davis. Now he'll try and move out in front of his own net. He does, gets it to Compton. Compton, puck quickly taken off his stick. Van de Wettering follows up, moves across the line. Van de Wettering, he runs into Mosbeck and goes down. Stand up defense there by Austin Mosbeck. Shut down that Bronco rush. And the Muskies bring it the other way. Tipped ahead. Here comes LaPlante. The shot across the line. Just over top of the net with a hard wrister. Puck sent back around the other way. LaPlante's going to pick it up in the right corner. Working against a couple of Bronco checkers. Now Veldizen comes in with a huge hit on Compton. And Max Hansen gets off a quick shot from the right circle. Saved by Sinclair. And he'll hold on. 7-11 gone. Opening period. Muskies won. Broncos nothing. Watching on home TV, brought to you by Homeland Financial. Broncos gain control off the draw, but backhanded off the glass and up into the netting. Second time we've had that tonight. Second time for something else, but I won't mention that. Here's the Muskies in the corner, working for the puck, drop, dropping his stick. There was Friesen now, trying to center it in. Friesen in a battle, Veldheisen gets it. He sends it around to the other corner, no musky over there to get it. Broncos will pick it up, try and get it out, they can't. Max Hansen sends it wide of the net. Broncos will pick it up on the far side, kept in by the muskies. Broncos looking to move it out, they will get it across the line. So far, most, most of the play has been in the Broncos' end here in the first eight minutes of the first period. And the goal by Ashton Veldheisen, making it 1-0 Fort Francis. Broncos turn it over. LaPlante's got it, right circle. Moves it to Veldheisen. Veldheisen backhander in front. LaPlante tried to shoot it, but it was blocked. Went wide of the nets. Veldheisen, or LaPlante rather, he lays a big hit. Quick shot off the post by Veldheisen. And LaPlante absolutely wiped out his checker on the right wing side. That was Chevalier. There's a shot from the point. Loose in the crease. Sinclair will cover it. That is the second Bronco to feel the pain of some serious aggression sent by, uh, delivered by the Muskies. It was Mosbeck laying the first hit on Hunter Horgan that sent him off. And then LaPlante downing Chevalier and the Broncos not liking that treatment. And Horgan, who's back in the game after taking that big shot from Mosbeck, he delivered an after-the-whistle check that knocked down one of the Muskie players. And that's going to send Fort Francis to the power play with 8.27 gone here in the opening period. An undisciplined penalty there by Hunter Horgan. And the Muskies' power play will go to work. It'll be Ozzie Hansen out there with Jack Davis. Engi. Two minutes for roughing after the whistle to Hunter Horgan. And the Muskies looking to make good and double this lead. Davis sends it towards the net. Tipped away by Johnston. Gene hustles in. He's got in the left corner. Gene behind the net. Muskies looking to set up. Davis. To Kirk. Kirk wheels around the right corner, gets it to Davis. He chases it down, tries to wrap around low, came in the near side. Almost had Sinclair napping, but Sinclair doing a good job to be in position, get the pads down and stop that one from going in. Good playmaking effort there by Jack Davis of the Muskies. 122 left in the power play. 9.04 gone here in the first period. Muskies lead 1-0. Hanson. Taking the draw. Broncos try and control off the faceoff. Kirk's got it though. He coughs it up. Broncos can't clear. Now Van de Wettering will try and he'll backhand it all the way down the ice. And it'll be Engie hustling back for it. Watched by Ty Naniska. Engie will set up behind his own net. One minute to go in the penalty to Horgan of the Broncos. Fort Francis moves it ahead. Kirk's got it. That tipped away. Nice. Defensive effort there by Van de Wettering. He slashes it off the stick of Ozzy Hansen and it goes into the netting out of play. 49 seconds left in the Muskies power play. 9.38 gone here in the first period. Fort Francis won. Beaver Bray nothing. 
Armstrong. Gets it back into his own zone. Back end to the right wing side. Now here's Laplante. Laplante moves into the Broncos end. He's got it to Krieger. Top of the right circle. Fires a shot with the screen in front from Mosbeck. Say, pad saved by Sinclair. Mosbeck throws a little cross check on his man in front. No call. Laplante now to Mosbeck. Oh, redirected it just wide. He was all alone in front. Nice ice vision there by Laplante to find him streaking to the net. But the pass just deflecting off his stick. Now turnover in behind the net. Racing in for it is Chevalier. He gives it up though and quickly the Muskies come out with two seconds left in the penalty. Green picks it off and the Broncos in. Puck is sent up ahead and that'll do it for the penalty to Horgan. So Muskies 0 for 1 with the power play. So far tonight they continue to lead 1-0 with 9.22 remaining in the first period. Broncos looking to get some kind of offense going. They've mostly been held out of the musky zone to this point. Moving it up, Green to Chevalier. He'll come across the line. Left side, he takes a huge hit after getting the shot on goal as Ashton Armstrong drilled him. That's the second hard shot Chevalier's taken in this period. First one from Laplante, and now Armstrong delivering the goods. Broncos get the puck in their own zone. Can't backhand it out though. Well, they will in this attempt as it's Burley getting the job done, but all the way down for an icing call. Face off, we'll come back into the Beaver Bray end with 8.44 remaining in the first period. Ozzie Hansen taking the draw. He wins it back, Engie, quick wrist shot, that hits the bodies in front, another shot, turn around, deflected off a Bronco stick right on net, Sinclair had to be watchful on that one. Dingwall's got it now. He'll backhand it out. That's going to go down the ice, and it looks like it'll be another icing call. And Naniska throws a little <laughs> shove in on Inky while racing back for the puck. Broncos have to watch their composure here. Do not want to be putting this dangerous Muskies offense on the power play, if at all possible. Hanson now. Davis has got it, left wing side. He puts it towards the net, that's blocked. Broncos get it, tip it out. And Muskies will take over back in their own zone. Grenier with it. They go off the glass. Muskies look at bank it out of the zone, they do. And racing after it now, it is Witherspoon. Racing Witherspoon in across the line. He heads to the left corner, looks for some help, he gets it. Here's Ozzie Hansen with it. He turns it over, but then turned back over. Armstrong shot, blocked. Puck deflects into the corner. Broncos look to move it out. Naniska, he can't get it past Mosbeck. Now it's Jake Perron trying to move the puck out. But two musky four checkers in. They got it behind the net, looking to bring it out front. Cleared away by the Broncos and out of the zone. And Mosbeck will race back for it. Passes over to Griffin Webb. Webb, he puts it off the stick of Armstrong, deflects high into the Beaver Bray zone. Johnston back for it. He moves it around the boards to Digwall. He has some trouble. He's gonna come back to Johnston. He'll smash it around the other side to go off the boards. And now, maybe a break. Racing down the ice for the Broncos. Number 21. But he circles all the way back out of the zone. Couldn't control the shot and get the puck on net. Now he turns it over. Aiden Gene will pick it off. Coming on the left wing side. Gene leaves it for Kirk. Kirk the shot. That deflected. Rebound off the side of the net. And the net off the moorings. Gene thought he had himself a sure wraparound goal, but a bit of a bump of the net caused it to come loose and led to a stoppage in play. 6.58 remaining in the first period. Muskies won, Broncos nothing. Laplante to take the face off. Puts it back to Engie. He sends it around the boards. Garrow tries to pick it up there. He moves it now behind the net, his own net to Burley. Burley can't handle it. Burley gets it back. Moves it to Compton. Compton. That pass up the middle. There's it by Laplante. But it'll be taken over by Garrow. Garrow across the line. Lightcourt tried to center it there. 
Muskies intercept. And quickly up ice they come. Now Pat lead pass. Racing after it is Trent Friesen. Friesen, he avoids a check, but costs up the puck at the same time to Garrow. Garrow sheds it around the boards, can't get it out. Max Hansen keeps it at the right point, keeps it in again. Now it'll get out. Off the stick of Ogden and out of the zone. Broncos will complete a change. And the Muskies, oh, turnover up the middle of the ice. Picked off there by Horgan, but he couldn't control it. Whoa! And Van de Wettering gets a little payback for the Broncos as he unleashed a huge hit on Trent Friesen. So the Muskies with the first three big hits of the night, but Horgan getting a little payback there. 5.56 to go in the first. Back to the point. Muskies send it out down the ice. Is it going to be icing? It will be. As getting back first was Mitchell Kemper for the Broncos. So another face off in the Muskie end. Gonna have to wait and see who that Muskie's first semifinal opponent's gonna be next Friday night. Be a 7-15 puck drop here at the Ice for Kids Arena. They are, will be the number one ranked team entering the Norwasa playoffs. They'll face the fourth place squad. But with standings not updated and still a couple of games to be played, still to be decided who exactly the Muskies will face. Beaver Brace currently sitting tied with Dryden with six points apiece according to the standings. Although Beaver Bay actually now with eight after their win against Red Lake. So Beaver Bay third, Dryden fourth at the moment. Sioux North sitting in fifth, but they've got games in hand that haven't been reported yet. So we'll wait and see if that gets them into the mix as well. Muskies down. Kind of a game of giveaways right now here. There's a hit thrown. Hard one just outside the Broncos blue line by Krieger. And he sent Naniska flying. Muskies now, Armstrong. He gets tangled up, two Bronco checkers on him, but stays with the puck. Armstrong now taking off his feet. And Perron's got it, he'll send it up ice. Pass misses Dingwall. And it'll be another icing call coming up this time against Beaver Brain. Face off in the Broncos zone 427 to play in the first. The goal by Ashton Goldeisen continuing to hold up. 1-0. Aiden Jean taking the draw now. Broncos get it from off the glass and out to the Muskie zone. Webb back for it. Watched by Compton. He's sending it ahead. Here's Gene with it now. He's got a good head of steam going. He taken down, and that's going to be a penalty. Lane Van de Wettering dragged down Aiden Gene, who had a step on him. And the Muskies will head to the power play for the second time as Van de Wettering gets the gate with 4 11 remaining here in the first period. The Muskies 0 for 1 with the man advantage. They lead 1 0. Veldizer puts it near behind the net. Now gets it back on the left wing boards to Armstrong in the point. Fires a high shot. Rebound off the end board. Set on goal. And play whistled down. Looks like the puck came off again. Or the net came off again. Second time this period. That Broncos net has found its way off the boards. So play is stopped, the face off will be to the right of Sinclair. 1.47 to go in the power play, 3.58 left in the first period. It is Lane Van de Wettering, two minute call for holding at 15.49. Put the Muskies on their second power play of the night. Broncos get control off the draw, look to move it out, and they bounce it off the skate and do so. Back for it now is Veldheisen. He back ends it off the boards to Krieger. Krieger goes right wing side to Laplante. Laplante, left wing now. Trying to hit Armstrong, but that was taken away. 
Nifty defensive work there by the Broncos. Fire down the ice. Muskie's down, looking to get the rush going. They move it up, here's Veldizen. He's got room on the left wing side, moves into the circle. He's gonna try and work it behind the net, he does. Now to the right corner. Leaves it behind him for Laplante. Laplante trying to center it. Hit a leg, now loose in front, Mosbeck's shot goes just wide. Laplante picks it up. He goes in front of Mosbeck. And that shot deflected by Ratcliffe. Broncos trying to clear it out. Dingwall working against Armstrong on the left wing boards. Bosbeck drop pass. Here's Krieger now, right circle. Fires a shot of a leg. Oh, almost redirected home by Bosbeck, but just wide. Muskies continue to gain control. Veldheisen. Krieger works towards the net. The pad saved by Sinclair. Broncos will get it. They look to back at it, down and out. 18 seconds left. In the power play, 2.25 remaining in the first period. Fort Francis won, Beaver Bray nothing. Pucks hit deep in the Beaver Bray zone. Garrow gets it. He'll bring it all the way out. Asset, Engi rather, to Max Hansen. And his clear in, quickly sent deep by Ratcliffe. And that'll do it for the penalty to Van Wettering. So, Muskies 0 for 2 with the man advantage tonight. They continue to lead 1 0. We have two minutes remaining here in the first period. Engie. Over to Max Hansen. To Willem Kirk. Kirk sends it the reverse way to Engie. Engie's going to grab it now. Head up to Kirk. Kirk. He'll wrist one in. Right on goal to Sinclair. He sends it to the side. Ozzie Hansen racing in looking for the rebound. Couldn't quite get there in time. Engie pitches in from the point. Now the Muskies dangerously at the line. Kirk with a spinorama, almost lost it. Muskie get it back though. Here's Ozzie Hansen looking to go to the net. Deflected wide by Burley. Broncos get it, can't clear it out. Max Hansen fires it into the right corner. Broncos get it out, tip it out to center. And back for it is Engie. Engie, he coughs it up. Here's Compton with a chance now. Compton shot, that hit the stick of Max Hansen and goes wide. Broncos chase after the rebound, but Puck will get out. One of the better chances of the game so far for the Broncos. They've been few and far between. So we are under a minute to go here in the first period. Hansen over to Engie. Now moving it up. It's Ozzie Hansen to Armstrong. He'll smack it into the Broncos end. Muskies will change. And the Broncos will start the rush the other way. Naniska off the boards. He finds his man coming in on the right wing side. The pass across. Shot. Oh, what a pad save there by Jared Coin. First time we mentioned his name tonight. He's been fairly uneventful around his crease. The normal backup goaltender for the Muskies getting the start here tonight. And he made a huge save on Cooper Dingwall in front on that redirection. Puck set deep into the Muskies end again. Six seconds remaining. They look to clear it, turnover. Muskies, oh, and another huge hit. And this time it's Aiden Jean putting the body on Daniska. And then Daniska comes back in a foul mood, looking to give a shot to Witherspoon after the buzzer sounds. But nothing else to come of that one. So the Muskies dominating the zone play, dominating the physical play. But so far on the scoreboard, just a one goal to show for it from Ashton Meldeisen. They'll head to the dressing room with the lead. Your score after one period at the Ice for Kids Arena in Fort Francis. The Fort Francis Muskies won. The Beaver Bray Broncos nothing. Stay tuned. Second period action coming up on Home TV brought to you by Homeland Financial in just a little bit.
Welcome back to the Ice for Kids Arena in Fort Francis. Your score after one period it is the hometown Fort Francis Muskies leading the Beaver Bray Broncos one to nothing. Joey Pear back with you on home TV. Muskie hockey brought to you by Homeland Financial. Just about ready to drop the puck for the second period. And we are underway. Muskies controlled most of the play in that first period but able to only get just the one goal off the stick of Ashton Veldeisen at the 102 mark. The assist to Clyde LaPlante and Taryn Inge to make it one nothing Fort Francis. Muskie's going 0 for 2 on the power play in the first period. And the Broncos now looking to try and get something going here in the second. And that's Brady Redsky, number 21, the mystery man from the first period. He was listed with the wrong number in the program. Our apologies to the Brady Redsky family and friends out there. We now have him identified. He had himself, he was one of the better Broncos in that first period. Muskies now looking to move the puck out. But Broncos grab it, Dingwall's got it. He'll go backhander, that goes just wide. Red Sky sends it toward the net. Saved there by Jared Acoin. Muskies can't clear. Copton keeps it in, or sorry, it's Garrow keeping it in at the left point. Mosbeck intercepts though for the Muskies. He sends it around to Friesen. Friesen, he takes a bump from Dingwall. Muskies look to pop it off the boards and out, and they do. But much better start to the second period for the Broncos, delayed offside and it'll be called against Beaver Bray. But that's probably the most offensive zone pressure on one shift that the Broncos have had all night. They had a lot of problems getting a rush going in the first period and getting much of anything toward the Muskie net. Muskies with a 14 to five shots on goal advantage in that first period. Broncos now. Turn it over. Ozzie Hansen sends it around the boards to Krieger. He just gets it out. And here come the Muskies. Ozzie Hansen sends it towards the goal. And James Sinclair with the stick save. And he'll cover it up, taking no chances. And faceoff will be in the Broncos zone with 134 gone here in the second period. Want to do a birthday shout out. Happy 12th birthday to Hannah Tucker. Was informed of that by her mom, Janine Tucker, before the game. So happy birthday, Hannah, on your 12th birthday today. Here come the Muskies now. Taryn Engi, his pass, right wing side, nobody there. And it's going to be an icing call against Fort Francis. Bit of a shaky start here for the black and gold to start the second period. Not able to generate much at all. Broncos have... Had the majority of the play here in the opening two minutes. And again, this is just a one goal hockey game. Even though Muskies dominated most of the first. The Broncos just one shot away from tying this up. Here's Webb with it now. He'll race out, cross the line to center. Left wing pass to Armstrong. Armstrong now, he'll stop along the boards. Try to send it toward the net. Fire off the boards quickly by Burley. Kept in by the Muskies at the right point. Jean's got it, or he's trying to get it in the corner. Pitching in are the Muskies to keep it in. Backhand it towards Armstrong, but he'll, puck will come out. Armstrong brings it across. Muskies have to clear the zone. And now Armstrong steals. He's coming in with Gene. Armstrong looking to pass across. Armstrong the pass to Gene. Oh, just underneath his stick. Aiden Gene with a good chance. Armstrong with the pass, but they could not quite connect on that one. Now another big hit in behind the Broncos' net. Muskies have been absolutely dominating physically as well. That's their fifth huge check of the game so far. Broncos have had one of their own, but the aggression factor certainly has tipped the scales the Muskies' way so far here tonight. Here's a pass up ahead. That clips off the Muskie stick. Sit all the way back down in the Fort Francis zone. No icing on the play. Mosbeck back for it. He'll send it in behind the net. And Webb's got it. He'll go to Armstrong. Puck comes around the other side now. Kirk with it. Gene, he gets it, smacks it out to center. Stopped there by Ratcliffe. He'll fire it in. Broncos race in on the forecheck. Naniska. Leaves it now for Red Sky. Red Sky tries to get around Mosbeck. That didn't work. 
And here comes Veldhuisen, the goal scorer today. He moves it up on the right wing side. Now centering pass, Jeans shot just wide. Broncos take over, race back out to center. Here comes Dingwall with it. Dingwall working there against Engie. And Engie angles Dingwall off the puck expertly. Gets control and moves it to the other side, but Muskies can't clear it. At least not for the moment. Now Veldheisen will try, he does. Out to center and Jeans got it. He lost control and it's offside as Witherspoon backhanded in with Gene already over the blue line. With 4.09 gone here in the second period. Fort Francis won, Beaver Bray nothing. A plot now to take the draw against Van de Wettering. Muskies fired right in on goal on Sinclair. He leaves it there for Parker Garrow. Garrow to the left wing side. Puck comes across the line. Muskies will pick it off. Tip it back in. Broncos will try again. Move it up to Compton. That pass missed. And it's going to be an icing call against Beaver Bray. With 4.29 gone here in the second period. Taking a look at the girls hockey standings. The Muskies dominating there as well. Fort Francis currently with a 7-0-1 record. First place, they have clinched top spot in the girls division. And they will be the number one seed entering the Norwasa playoffs next Friday night, February 23rd. They'll take on the fourth place Sioux North Warriors at 5.15 p.m. Puck drop here at the Ice for Kids Arena. And then it'll be the Muskie Boys taking on their yet to be determined opponent right after that one. The two earlier semifinals, the two versus three semifinals. We'll see the St. Thomas Aquinas Saints take on the Dryden Eagles in girls action at 12.15. And then it'll be the second and third place teams in the boys division, which again, still to be decided with a few games left to play on the schedule. That'll take place at 2.15. So some fantastic Norwasa playoff action coming to Fort Francis next Friday night. If you're in the area, we highly recommend you come on and out to see it. It's going to be a super weekend of playoff excitement. Here's Veldheisen with the puck in behind the net. Centering pass. Laplot just had his stick lifted at the last second. Trying to get a shot off. Couldn't quite get it. Mosbeck pinches in, though. Moves it to Laplot. He collides there with Kemper. Laplot wins the battle. Trying to move it out front. Backhands it off the skate of Garrow. Slides to Sinclair, and he covers it up. Nice hustle shift there for Clyde Laplante, making things happen on the forecheck, and almost getting the Muskies that second goal. 5-11, sorry, 5-51 gone here in the second period. And it remains a 1-0 Muskies lead. We talk about those semifinals here at the Ice for Kids Arena next week. Again, the two versus three semifinals. As Sinclair trying to find the puck, got caught up in his pad. The two versus three girls semifinal. The St. Thomas Aquinas Saints and Dryden Eagles at 12-15. The boys two versus three semifinal at 2-15. And then at 5-15, it'll be the Muskie girls taking on the Sioux North Warriors. And at 7-15, the Muskie boys taking on the fourth place finishers in the Norwasa boys division. The championship finals will be held on Saturday, February 24th. The girls final at 1.30 p.m and the boys final at 3.30 p.m. Muskies now turnover in front. What a chance there. Another shot, scores! The turnover costing the Muskies dearly in their own zone. And Ty Naniska, sorry, check that. Make it, yes, it is Ty Naniska cleaning up the loose puck. The original shot stopped by a coin, but the rebound lying right out in front. No one picking up Naniska coming in late. And at 6.23 of the second, we've got ourselves a tie hockey game. Again, for all that the Muskies have controlled the play, the Broncos were just one shot away, and they found that shot right now and have tied this hockey game 1-1. Muskies clear it down to the Broncos end. Now we'll see if we see a little more urgency from the Muskies here going forward. And we're gonna get a cross-checking call against the Broncos. So 
Bit of a momentum killer here after just tying the game. But a cross-checking Fiddley coming to Ratcliffe. So it's Ty Daniska from Brady Red Sky at 6.23 to make it a 1-1 game. But now at 6.41, it's Ratcliffe, Griffin Ratcliffe going off for the Broncos. Two minutes for cross-checking. Muskies now on their third power play of the night. And they'll be looking to regain the lead right here. They're 0 for 2 with the man advantage so far. Broncos get it, fire it all the way down the ice. That was Johnston. Krieger with the puck behind the musky net. Moves it out now. Sent ahead, Mosbeck chases after it. Johnston will get there first for the Broncos. He'll wrist it all the way down. Nice penalty killing so far for Beaver Bray. 1.15 to go in the penalty to Ratcliffe. And now a turnover in the Fort Francis zone. And here is Van de Wettering looking to make something happen. He'll go back to the point. Garrow's wrister. That was blocked by Armstrong. Went into the corner. Broncos stay on it, though. Beaver Bray looking much the more energized team here in the second period. They have tied this game up and now putting on a staunch penalty kill at the moment. And they'll clear it all the way back down again. Just 45 seconds remaining for the Muskies to get something going here with this man advantage. Red Sky in there. He has been a presence here for the Broncos here tonight. Set up the tying goal. He's been all over that puck. Johnston gets it, rips it around the boards. Krieger's gonna keep it in. Sends it on goal, saved by Sinclair. Puck left behind the net. Broncos get it, Johnston off the boards, off the glass and out. And now, maybe a break. Here comes Red Sky, right wing side. He'll pass it across and that just missed Dingwall. He had to reach for it, couldn't quite get there. 10 seconds left in the penalty to Ratcliffe. And I think the Broncos may have picked up more momentum on this penalty kill. Turnover, here's the shot on goal. That was Dingwall with it. And a big save there by a coin as Veldeisen coughed that one up. It's fired back into the musky zone. And suddenly, it is a completely different looking hockey game, the Muskies. In a 1-1 battle now with the Broncos. LaPlante shot, that's over top of the net. He'll chase down the rebound in the right corner. Centering pass, off a of skate. Back to the point now, Engie the wrister, pad save. Kirk the wraparound try on the backhander, no good. Morgan gets it, and it'll get out just stuck over the line. Muskies now looking to get the feet moving a little faster. 0 for 3 on the power play now in the game. And it's 1-1, but here they come across the line, looking for Engi, activating from the blue line position in front, and now a hit from behind against the Muskies, and the Broncos are gonna go on the power play for the first time tonight. And never a penalty you want 200 feet from your own end. And it's gonna be Willem Kirk, the rookie, going off for the Muskies. It's a four minute head contact double minor. So four minutes with 9.32 gone here in the second period. Kirk nailed for four minutes for head contact and a absolutely excellent opportunity for the Broncos to take the lead here now with an extended power play. Here's Red Sky. He'll start the play from behind the Bronco net. So the Muskie penalty killers have not been tested yet tonight. They're gonna to be double tested right now. Halfway through the second period in a 1-1 tie. The Beaver Bray Broncos putting up a terrific fight here tonight at the ice for kids. And now uh, Puck was knocked with a high stick by the Broncos. So that faceoff's gonna stay down in the Beaver Bray end. That'll help the Muskie penalty kill. 3.31 left in the double minor to Kirk. 9.59 left here in the second period. Pivotal point of the game right here. Can the Broncos get the lead for the first time tonight? Or can the Muskies kill off 
an extended power play and get the momentum back for themselves. This has definitely been a Beaver Bray period to this point. Huskies get it off the boards to the neutral zone. Red Sky's got it. He'll go back in his own zone. Paran moves it left side. Van de Wettering now racing up against Webb. Pokes it into the end boards. Webb takes him down. And are we getting another penalty? Interference call coming to the Muskies. And look out now. Because the Beaver Bray Broncos are going to have a full two-minute, two-man advantage as Griffin Webb is tagged for the interference call with 9.25 left here in the second. So if the penalty killers were under fire before, they're really going to be feeling the heat now. And the Broncos call timeout to set up a crucial power play opportunity as Griffin Webb gets two minutes for interference at 10.35. There's still 2.57 left in the double minor to Willem Kirk. And with 9.25 remaining in the second period, the Broncos are gonna be staring at a full-blown five-on-three opportunity for the entire two minutes if they want it. And then still another 57 seconds of power play time after that. While we're waiting for this timeout to complete, quick look at the NHL scoreboard for you here tonight. After one period, the Edmonton Oilers leading the St. Louis Blues two to one. Other Canadian teams in action tonight. Toronto Maple Leafs leading the Philadelphia Flyers 3-1, five minutes into the third period. Montreal Canadiens trailing the New York Rangers 4-2 after two periods. The Ottawa Senators, Senators who've been playing pretty good hockey as of late, down 4-1 to the Anaheim Ducks in a surprise, about five minutes into the third period there. And later on tonight, it'll be the San Jose Sharks in Calgary taking on the Flames and the Detroit Red Wings in Vancouver as they are facing the high-flying Canucks. Timeout is over. And the Broncos about to go to work on a five on three for a full two minutes. Left wing side, pass intercepted. Nice play there by the Muskies. That was Mosbeck getting in front of that pass and clears it all the way down and a huge clearing for the Muskies early on here in the five on three disadvantage. Now Van de Wettering, he'll go back to Perron at the left point. Cuts across the middle, goes right side. Walking in, Red Sky the shot, pad saved by a coin. Red Sky gets the rebound. He's got it in the right circle. He'll leave it for Perron. Screen in front by the Broncos. Perron works in, a shot, pad saved by a coin. Loose in the corner. Red Sky will grab it there. Veldizen knocks his man down. Muskie loses his stick. All kinds of trouble now for the fort, but LaPlante hustles to the puck and sends it down as Mosbeck had lost his stick. And it was five on two and a half for a moment there, but Muskies escape. 157 left in the double minor to Kirk. 58 seconds left in the penalty to Webb. Still five on three in front, shot, pad save by a coin. And the puck rifled down the ice. And the Muskies will change the penalty killers quickly. Long pass ahead for the Broncos. Garrow's got it. He looks to go across to Dingwall. Dingwall sends it around the boards. Picking it up in the corner, it's Red Sky. He'll go to the point. Johnston, cross ice, gets it back. Johnston now walks in. The wrister, that's wide. Engie trying to get to it before Van de Wettering. Good hustle by Dingwall to keep it in. He gets it to Van de Wettering. Veldheisen battling for the puck there. Garrow's in deep, centering pass. That's cleared away by the Muskies. Nine seconds left in the penalty to Webb. Centered for Dingwall, he can't find it in skates, saves it though. Johnston, right point, sends it toward the net. Red Sky shot, saved by Jared Coin from in close on Brady Red Sky. And the penalty to Webb is over, 53 seconds left. Still in the double minor to Willem Kirk. 7.21 remaining in the second period. And the Muskies, less than a minute away 
from escaping a dire situation in that five on three, two minute, two minute advantage. They've killed off the web part of the equation. Now they just gotta kill off the rest of Kirk's infraction. Puck back to the point. Ratcliffe has it go off his stick and across the line. And the Broncos will have to clear the zone and regroup. Chevalier now in across on the right wing. He pulls back to Ratcliffe. Left side, walking in. The wrister, pad saved by a coin off Johnston. Puck's gonna come back to Johnston at the left point. He'll try another wrister, that's blocked. Gene felt that one off the glove. Loose in front. Now the backhander. Oh, what a glove save! Darren a coin with grand larceny on Everett Chevalier. He flashes the catch and mitt and makes the stop from right in front. 14 seconds left in the penalty to Kirk. 6.42 left in the second period. And through the efforts of Jared Coyne and the penalty killing crew, it's still a 1-1 game. And now the Muskies win the draw and send it down. And that ought to do it, although the clock had not started moving for a few seconds. Now it's rolling. Six seconds remaining now in the penalty. Buck set up the left wing side. Coming in with it is Com Seth Compton. Shot! That goes wide. Penalty to Kirk is over. Another shot. It's escape. And the Muskies escape. No harm done on the two-man disadvantage. And now, how will that turn the momentum in their favor in what has been an all Beaver Bray second period? They've got the only goal of the frame. They had extended power play time, but not scoring on it. Will it come back to hunt the Broncos? Here tonight, pass across, that just missed. Set up ahead now. This is Chevalier working his way into the zone on the right wing, trying to get around Ingi. Chevalier stops, controls the puck, tried to center it to Van de Wettering. He couldn't get a stick on it. Loose in front. Muskies will grab it and come to center. Veldhuizen with it. He'll dump it towards the blue line. Max Hansen will send it in. Muskies delayed offside. They clear the zone. 5.20 remaining in the second period. Muskies won. Broncos won. And this game has turned into a dandy here at the Ice for Kids tonight. A Thursday night showdown here in Norwasha Boys Hockey Action. This one is up for grabs. Krieger now offside Muskies though as he didn't wasn't able to enter cleanly with the puck as it bounced high. And we'll have a face off outside the Breber Ray zone with 5.01 left in the second period. Davis has got it. They'll look along the right wing boards. Leaves it, try to leave it for Friesen. Sorry, make that Ozzie Hansen, but the Broncos bring it out. Johnston's got it. He'll send it around the boards. He gets it behind the net. The centering pass. That was Naniska, the goal scorer, trying to set up his line mate in front. Couldn't quite get it to him. Muskies now. Webb. Who's it? On the right wing side. Coming up with it now. It is Krieger. Krieger. Good dash here by the Muskie forward. Trying to center it. Loose in front. Off the side of the net. Krieger gloves it at it. Broncos clear it to safety. Hands on the shot. Pad saves Sinclair. Another shot. That's just over top of the net. That was wired by Krieger. Muskie's now picked up the tempo. Mosbeck's got it. He puts it into the left corner. Broncos get there, rip it off the boards and out and deflected by Mosbeck. So no icing on the play. He's got Red Sky coming in fast and Red Sky's gonna win the race. Red Sky's got it. He'll go left point to Burley. Tried to go back to Red Sky. That was intercepted. And the Muskies move it to center. Davis, he'll fire it in and head off for a change. Broncos grab it. Bring it back the other way. Up to center now. This is Van de Wettering. He's drilled by Webb. But Webb is going to get the call. We're going to wait and see. Another head contact penalty, perhaps. Referees discussing it. Looked like clean, clean hit off of the puck possession. Not a late hit, but did he get too high on him? 
Webb going to the box, his second penalty of the period. Referees discussing it. This will be crucial. Will it be two? Will it be four? It will only be two for a hold. Interesting call there off of the collision, but two for holding to Webb with 3.32 left here in the second period. So Webb tagged for interference earlier in the period. Now two minutes for holding. Broncos 0 for 2 on the power play, but with a chance to get their first lead of the evening right here. So it is two minutes for holding to Griffin Webb at 16.28. And Red Sky races into the zone for the Broncos. He takes a hard hit from the side. Muskies had to be careful there. Almost a from behind hit, but nicely angled there to avoid the penalty. Pass in front, trying to backhand it on net was Dingwall. He puts it behind the net, now in the right corner. Back to the point, Broncos managed to save it. Nice dive by Van de Wettering. And then a Muskie's taken off his feet. No call coming. And a stick goes flying to the rafters almost. Shot on goal, no call coming. Wild play there as Perron sticks it up in the runners. Now a breakaway chance, but wait a minute. Now it's getting whistled down. What do we got here? Is it a late penalty call? Let's see, referee coming over. Oh, and now we've had a fan, a Kenora fan ejected from the game by the referee. He's sending him to the exits as the Broncos supporter being a little too boisterous in the stands. He has been ejected. And now the referee talking to the score table. Referee explaining things over at the Broncos side. They're wondering why there wasn't a penalty on Jake Perron's stick being sent to the moon by the Muskie player. Then the play came down the other way. It looked like Gene had a clear-cut breakaway racing in the zone. But the play, at this point, mysteriously whistled down. Not sure what the explanation is on that one. The penalty door is open on the Broncos side. So we're gonna see what comes out of this one. 2.29 to go. In the second period, we've got a 1-1 tie. Griffin Webb has 57 seconds left in his penalty. But I think the power play for the Broncos is going to be over as Naniska skates to the bench. Now, is this a bench minor or is this a penalty to Naniska? So it's a bench minor. We're going to... We're just speculating as they didn't specify, but may have been for unsportsmanlike conduct on the bench of the Broncos. So two minute, we're guessing unsportsmanlike conduct minor to the Broncos. So that ends their power play. They are now 0 for 3 with the man advantage to match the Muskies' efforts with the man advantage here tonight. So we'll play four on four for 57 seconds, and then the Muskies will have an abbreviated power play. Broncos looking to move out. He, LaPlante takes down Red Sky, and the Bronco fans howling for another penalty on that one. Here's LaPlante now, across. Backhand pass! Oh, just over the stick of Mosbeck because he was going to the side of the net. Looking to put that one home. Mosbeck has certainly been active from the blue line tonight. Now, here come the Muskies. Armstrong, he looks to get around Perron. He gets spun around, loses the puck. Bronco set it up and out. The feistiness factor has picked up exponentially here in the second period. And now another penalty. And it looks like the Muskies are going to get this one for interference. And I believe it's going to be Ma Austin Mosbeck getting the gates. So 
The referee giveth, the referee taketh away, and the referee giveth again to the Broncos. As they are back on the power play, it's gonna be a four on three now for 16 seconds. We got 149 left in the period. As Mosbeck gets two minutes for interference. So four on three. Ratcliffe fires, that's deflected. Loose though, set toward the front of the net. Muskies get it, backhand it to safety. That should do it for the Webb penalty. And Griffin Webb indeed is out of the box. We are four on four for another minute. And then it'll be the Broncos going back on the power play. And this is sent all the way down the ice by the Broncos. Mistake there. Icing call against Beaver Bray with 125 left in the second. 56 seconds left in the penalty. The bench minor to the Broncos. And a minute 37 left in the minor to Mosbeck. Broncos get it. Look to dump it out of the zone. Back for it is Perron now. Perron. He'll move it over to Chevalier. Chevalier. Quick pass. Coming up the right wing side. It's Van de Wettering. He works his way into the zone with Chevalier. But Muskies turn around, set it down the ice. And this will be an icing call. As the team's still four on four. 33 seconds left in the bench minor to the Broncos. 114 left in the minor to Mosbeck. And 102 left in the second period in a 1-1 hockey game. It looked early on like it was going to be all Muskies tonight as they scored a minute two into the game. Ashton Veldizen getting the marker. There's a shot right on goal. A coin with the save. And the Muskies with a 14-5 shot advantage in the first. Broncos had barely any good scoring opportunities, but whatever head coach Josh Miles said in the dressing room in between periods worked. Because this has been an all new looking Breaver Bray team here in the second. They have the only goal of the period and they have carried most of the play. Only thing that stopped them is their power play, which has struggled. They had a two bad advantage for two full minutes, couldn't score with the game tied. Eight seconds left in the bench minor to the Broncos. Dingwall's got the puck in the musky end. Dingwall trying to go to the net. He puts it wide. He's taken down. Muskies will get it. And now the penalty to the Broncos is over. Jeans got it in across the line. He fires a shot. Sinclair with the save. It's caught up in his blocker. And it will be a faceoff in the Broncos end. 33 seconds left in the penalty to Austin Mosbeck. So we're five on four now in favor of the Broncos. 21.6 seconds left in the penalty, or sorry, in the period, rather. LaPlante will take the draw. Broncos gain control, and they'll look to move it out. One more rush before the period ends. Lift, flip pass to Garrow. He can't control it, but the Broncos will grab it, and here comes Van de Wittering. He drops it to Perron. Shot! Gloves saved by a coin. Neat as you please. 4.4 seconds left in the middle stanza. And now are we getting another musky penalty? It is a tripping call to Trent Friesen with 4.4 seconds left. And that means if the Broncos don't score here in the next 4.4, they're going to have a two-man advantage for 12 seconds coming out of the onto the ice for the third period. So the fourth power play of the night, fifth power play of the night for the Broncos, rather. And puck is loose in the corner, and that'll do it for the second period. So when we come back for the third, the Broncos will have 11 seconds of a five-on-three advantage, and then another minute and 44 power play time after that, barring any other penalties, a penalty-filled second period, but just the one goal off the stick of Ty Daniska. And we are set up for a beauty of a third period as the two teams head to the dressing room deadlocked. Your score after two periods at the Ice for Kids Arena in Fort Francis. The Fort Francis Muskies won. The Beaver Bray Broncos won. Third period action on home TV brought to you by Homeland Financial coming up in just a little bit.
Welcome back to the third period of hockey action here on Home TV, brought to you by Homeland Financial. Your score after two periods. The Fort Francis Muskies and the Beaver Bray Broncos all tied up at one in a game that has steadily increased in terms of intensity and bitterness as the two teams have been going at each other more and more rough as the game has continued. A flood of penalties in that second period. Just the one goal. Ty Naniska getting the marker for the Broncos at 6.23. The assist to Brady Redsky. But a plethora of penalties. A five on three for the Broncos earlier in the second. They start this period with a five on three, but that is now over. And now they've got the power play for another minute and 38 seconds as they look to grab their first lead of the hockey game. Trent Friesen still in the box for the Muskies for tripping. And the Muskies send it down the ice. The Muskies picking up a double minor in that second period for head contact to Will Willem Kirk, followed by an interference call to Griffin Webb. That gave the Broncos a full five on three for two minutes. They couldn't capitalize there. But then Webb with a holding call later in the period. Mosbeck getting a interference call and then Friesen the tripping call with 4.4 seconds left, setting up this early period power play for the Broncos, which has 57 seconds left on it. One minute gone in the third period, all tied at one. Here is Perron to the shot, saved by a coin. Muskies wire it down the ice. As Webb clearing the zone, 40 seconds left now in the Bronco power play. And that action-packed second period, even including a fan ejection as a Beaver Bray Broncos supporter was sent packing by the referee for complaining about a non-call of a Jake Perron stick being helicoptered up to the rafters by one of the Muskie players. But the Muskies uh, probably got it, or we probably got evened up against the Muskies about five seconds later when an Aiden Jean breakaway was whistled down mistakenly appeared by the referees that the Broncos did not have possession of the puck. And then the Broncos got a bench minor for complaining about the non-call against Perron. Now it's going to be the Muskies getting a high sticking call and it's Kalen Grenier to the box with 146 gone here in the third. And now another five on three for the Broncos, although short, only nine seconds until Friesen gets out of the box. But musky penalties have been a problem here tonight as Grenier gets two minutes for high sticking. And here's a chance, a backhander. That was by Compton, blocked by Veldeisen. He sends it around the other side, Friesen's out of the box, and now it's five on four for the Broncos for another minute and 46 seconds. Johnston, Rister, stick save by Jared Acoin, who's been really good in net for the Muskies. A backup goaltender normally for the black and gold. He has been solid here on home ice tonight, as has James Sinclair for the Broncos. 124 left in this Bronco power play. Broncos 0 for 5 with the man advantage so far. Puck to center. Broncos pick it up. Ratcliffe's got it now. 52 seconds left in the power play. Dingwall tips, redirected into the zone, but Muskies will get it and fire it down. Engi getting the job done there. 40 seconds left now in the power play. Muskies one, Broncos one. 3.15 gone in the third period. It's anyone's game here tonight at the ice for kids. Krieger's got the puck now. In across the line, short-handed. Works around Johnston. But the Broncos get the puck back, but just 15 seconds left now. In the penalty to Grenier. Good four check here by Krieger on the penalty kill. Then he knocks his man down away from the puck. Muskies might have got called for interference on that one, but got away with it. Engie. 
Looking to track the puck down. The penalty is over. To Grenier. Broncos fall to 0 for 6 on the power play. But it's still a 1-1 hockey game. Four minutes gone here in the third. And now the Muskies break out three on two. Pass across. Here's Krieger with it. He shoots. Scores! Blake Krieger completing the three on two perfectly for the black and gold. And Fort Francis is back out in front with 4-10 gone in the third. Blake Krieger putting the home side ahead. It's two to one Muskies. So Aiden Jean with a terrific pass across. The diagonal cross ice feed. Krieger picked it up on the fly. Walked in and made no mistake, mistake beating James Sinclair to the glove side. And the Muskies have the lead back that they gave up earlier in the second period. Blake Krieger getting the goal. And Fort Francis now with a 2-1 lead, 4-29 gone here in the third. Mosbeck sends it deep into the zone. Garrow turns it over, shot! That's fired wide by Witherspoon. Broncos have made a couple of egregious turnovers here tonight. Big hit there, oh my goodness, freezing. And the Bronco player is still down, and he is in distress. Trent Friesen with about the sixth thunderous musky check delivered tonight. And the Bronco player trying to get a number on here. He's looking for some assistance. Having trouble getting to his feet. He's up on one skate. With the Broncos assistance coming up. Sorry, no, the player is down still in his stomach. player up in the skate was just overlooking his teammates. The Broncos player is down. And he does not look like he's moving very much, if at all, right now. 4.55 gone here in the third period. And we've got ourselves a serious situation involving one of the Broncos players, but thankfully it is number 19, Seth Compton. He's helped to his feet. Looks like he's going to skate off under his own power, thankfully. So I'm not sure if he got the wind knocked out of him. Or might have been dazed, but looks like he's favoring perhaps the right leg a little bit as he's walking along the length of the bench. But glad to see Compton able to get up on his own accord. A little bit of help from his teammates, but certainly skated off under his own power. So good news there for Compton and the Broncos. Certainly don't want to see any of these young men or women in the girls game ever get hurt. Spirit of competition is one thing, but certainly no one's looking to injure anybody else. Nobody's hoping for injury for anyone else. Not if you've got the right frame of mind to be watching this game. And Compton, it looks like, will be okay. So thank goodness for that. Muskies now. The 2-1 lead, five minutes gone in the third. And we are going to get icing call against the Broncos. So faceoff will come back down into the Beaver Bray end. Set behind the net. Muskie's looking to grab it there, but it'll be Garrow picking it up. Moving along the boards. Bronco still can't quite clear it. Webb tried to keep it in, but he was unable to, so it's offside against the Muskies. 6.20 gone here in the third. Muskies two, Broncos one.
Davis trying to get the puck for the Muskies. He can't get it away from Perron, though. He will send it into the Fort Francis end. Webb's back for it. He moves around a check, sends it up to Rayson Witherspoon. Witherspoon can't get it out. Oh, a big hit. Johnson got dropped. He heads to the bench. And the musky hit attack just keeps on coming. Here comes Jack Davis now into the zone for the Muskies. He's body, sent down to one foot. Puck sent out the center, Engie's got it. Puck sent ahead. Now Davis tried to create a turnover. Sinclair comes out to help. Moves it up the boards. And here come the Broncos. Parker Guerra with it. He fires it all the way around the far side. Engie up against Red Sky. Muskies get control, send it around. Whoa, look out, Garrow with a huge hit. And the Broncos get one back in that column as he knocked over Kirk. But Kirk quickly out down the right wing. He fires the shot. Sinclair the save, he drops to cover the rebound and hold on. 6.38 gone here in the third period. Muskies two, Broncos one. He's win the draw. Try to put it into the corner. Kirk's got it on the right wing boards. Try to put it towards the net. But this is Lane Van de Wettering picking up for Kenora. Puck tipped out the center. Muskie's control, Grenier. He turns it over. Here's Chevalier. Oh, he almost walked in all by himself. Fires a high shot to the right corner. Armstrong gets it. He can't clear the zone. Muskie's will have to try again. Armstrong gets it back. He moves it around to the right side boards. Sent up ahead, and here comes Gene. But he's pickpocketed, and the Broncos turn it back the other way. Johnston, he'll put it deep into the zone. Engie back for it. He avoids a check from Isaiah Green. Now Gene throws a hit along the right left wing boards. Engie moves to Gene, who quickly rips it around the other side, opposite way to Kirk. Kirk can't control it. Fired there by Chevalier off a skate wide of the net. Green's got it. Works against Enke, centering pass, and that deflected just wide. Armstrong off the boards, and he'll send it down the ice, and this should be an icing call against the Muskies. It is 7.52 gone in the third period. And Beaver Bray continuing to trail Fort Francis two to one. Red Sky now up against LaPlante, the face-off circle, LaPlante wins it. Muskies look to start the rush. Mosbeck will have to go the other side. Veldheisen, he can't get it past Naniska. Muskies will take another crack at it. Veldheisen up the Witherspoon, that gets away from him. Broncos recover, Red Sky sends it back in. Witherspoon. Almost turns over, now does turn it over. Here comes Garrow, the shot on goal. Stick saved by LaCoyne. He's lost his stick now behind the net. Muskie's gotta get it out of the zone. Give their goaltender time to get his stick, and he will. Here's Witherspoon down the left wing side. He's taken off his feet. That's gonna be a tripping penalty to the Broncos. Rayson Witherspoon with a good rush down the left wing side. And the Broncos We'll head to the penalty box. And it's Ratcliffe frustrated. More with himself than anything as he got his stick tangled up in the skates of Witherspoon. And with 8.41 gone here in the third, the Muskies will go back on the power play. Ratcliffe's second penalty of the night. So the musky power play, which has struggled here tonight so far. They are 0 for 3 in the contest, but looking to add some insurance marker here with nine minutes gone in the third period, leading two to one. 
from behind the net now. Muskies moved up to the right side to Ozzy Hansen. Hansen. He gets it to Davis. Davis, right circle. Drops it for Hansen. Hansen now. Leaves it. Kirk's got it. He backhands it. Left side. Shot. That's fired high over the net by Aiden Jean. Muskies track down the rebound. Ozzy Hansen with it. He turns it over, though, and Chevalier sends it out. One minute left in the Muskie power play. Chevalier, hard for check as he was all over Gene on that play. But here comes Kirk now. Cross the line. Kirk, shot just wide. Here's Ozzy Hansen. He'll skate to the center. Tried to put it towards the net. Broncos clear it. And here comes Lane Van de Wittering. He's got the puck shorthanded in across the line. Van de Wittering stops along the boards, just trying to milk some of this penalty time off for the Broncos. And the Broncos still with possession of the puck. That's sending off the stick of Red Sky. He'll chase it down. Red Sky battling with Aiden Jean. And now the Muskies finally get control, but just 15 seconds left in the power play. Terrific penalty kill here by the Broncos. 9.28 left in the third period. Fort Francis two, Beaver Bray one. Puck deep in the Muskie zone, and that's gonna do it for the power play. So the Muskies fall to 0 for four on the power play. Can the Broncos get some life off of that? They trail by one. Here's Naniska. He fires it in deep. Chasing after it is Garrow. Going up against Mosbeck. Collision between the two big men in the left corner. Muskies looking to move it out. Red Sky though, keep it in. Put it to the end boards. Mosbeck. Puck set ahead now. Armstrong, he's got it. Oh. Almost had control, would have been in all alone, but couldn't quite control the puck on the bounce. Try to center it, but scores! Armstrong staying with the play, chased the puck down, and a perfect centering pass in front. And he finds Clyde Laplante right on the doorstep. And the one-timer beats James Sinclair with 8.38 to go. So it is Clyde LaPlante getting the goal. He set up Beltheisen's marker in the first period. And now he gets set up by Armstrong here at 12.22 of the third. And a huge insurance goal for the black and gold as they now lead three to one. Muskies looking for their sixth Norwasa win in a row. They have not lost in conference play since December 8th, over two months ago. And looking good to keep that string alive, but still eight minutes left in this one. Plenty of time. The Broncos have proved to be a plucky squad here tonight. Let's see if they got enough left in the gas tank to mount another rally. Here comes Van de Wittering. He loses his stick and they're gonna get a chance right here. And it looks like it's gonna be a slashing call going against Fort Francis. And it's gonna be Ozzie Hansen heading to the box. Two minutes for slashing with 7.48 to play. So at the 12-12 mark, Ozzie Hansen, two minutes for slashing. Bronco power play, 0 for six tonight. But a chance to draw them within one goal right now. It's not how many sometimes, it's when you get them. Here's their chance, a shot to flex off the skate of Garrow in front. Muskies grab it and fire it all the way down. So again, that third Muskie goal, Clyde LaPlante from Ashton Armstrong at 11-22. LaPlante with a two-point night, and it's 3-1 Fort Francis. Garrow now in across the line. He'll leave it for Naniska. Over to Perron. Shot! Blocked in front by Grenier, and the Muskies clear it out. 
Van de Wittering now. He'll get the puck back. Skate to center. Whoa! Tried to get around Gene. Lost his footing and went down. Puck cleared in the zone. Minute to go in the power play. Naniska's got it. He'll go cross ice to Perron. Now to Chevelli off the bench. Perron shot, scores! Jake Perron and the Broncos are alive with 6.37 to play in the third period. Jake Perron with a power play goal. The Broncos finally strike with a man advantage. And it's Muskies three, Broncos two. You had a feeling these Broncos were not gonna go away quietly. The way they've battled back here tonight. And Parad six the power play marker. So it is Jake Perron with a power play goal. Assist going to Ty Naniska and Brady Redsky. Two points apiece. Scores! And just like that, we are all even. Looked like not much of a rush coming down, but Everett Chevalier going hard to the net redirects the puck. And how about that, folks? Two goals in 20 seconds. And suddenly, the Beaver Bray Broncos are back on even ground. It is 3-3. Got to applaud the spirit of the visitors tonight. They could have folded up and went home after that 3-1 goal by the Muskies. But goals by Jake Perron, and now 20 seconds later, Everett Chevalier, and we are tied with six minutes to go in the third. This is anyone's game. We are in for a furious finish and a big hit. So it's Everett Chevalier from Alex Johnston at 13.43 after Perron scored from Naniska and Redsky at 13.23. And what looked to be a situation that the Muskies were gonna cruise home for that sixth straight Norwasa win has turned on its head in almost no time. And we are in for a fight to the finish between a Muskie squad that is undefeated other than for one shootout loss in Norwasa play and a Broncos squad looking for its second win in a row and trying to move to 500 in their regular season finale. And now Grenier is going to get nailed for the interference or the tripping call. And the momentum has swung all the way in the Broncos' favor now as Kalen Grenier to the box for tripping with 5.13 remaining in the third period. And the Broncos having just connected on the power play for the first time in seven tries a minute and a half ago with Perron getting the goal. We'll now get another power play opportunity and see if they can get the lead for the first time this evening. At the point, it's Van de Wettering. He sets up, fires the wrister. That's blocked in front by Max Hansen. Broncos track it down. Here's Van de Wettering again. He'll go right wing side. Shot from the circle. That's blocked again by Max Hansen off the stick of Red Sky. Van de Wettering keeps it in play though in the musky end. Oh, but it has it slide off his stick to center. Broncos have to clear the zone. Minute and a half to go in the power play. Muskies three, Broncos three. Thursday night spectacular from the Ice for Kids Arena. Where else would you want to be? Back to the point. Perron to the corner. Red Sky to Van de Wettering. Shot, hits a couple bodies, loose shot, scores! Get it on the go! 
It's Parker Garrow! Second straight power play marker for the Broncos! On their second power play opportunity in a row. And with 4.22 remaining, the Broncos have scored three straight times in a span of two minutes and 15 seconds and have taken their first lead of the night. It is 4-3. So what a turn of events here in the third period. The Muskies taking a 3-1 lead with around seven or with around eight minutes to play on the goal by Clyde LaPlante. But goals by Jake Perron, Everett Chevalier, and now Parker Garrow, within a span of two minutes and 15 seconds, have the Beaver Bray Broncos in front four to three with 4.02 to go in the third. Full credit to the Broncos for a gallant comeback effort. And now it's the home team that's scrambling to find a goal. Well, they will lose their first game in regulation time this season in Norwasa play. LaPlante feeds it across. Armstrong can't control it. Now Chevalier, he took down his man. No penalty call there. Muskies weren't happy with that non-call. Armstrong off the boards. Garrow sends it back in, delayed offside. And Mosbeck will take it there. Three and a half to go in the third. Beaver Bray four, Fort Francis three. Puck tied up in the official and two players at the blue line. And the Broncos will take it out. Veldizen bodies Red Sky to the ice. So that fourth Bronco goal, Parker Garrow from Lane Van de Wettering and Brady Redsky for Redsky's third point of the night. Armstrong in with a shot, saved by Sinclair. And how about the work of James Sinclair in the Bronco net tonight? He's kept this team in the game long enough that they were able to find what they needed to grab the lead here on the road. 3-0-3 to play in the third. Broncos four, Muskies three. Muskies looking to center it off the stick of Gene. Broncos can't clear though. Muskies looking to keep it in, they cannot. And here comes Beaver Bray, shut Compton rather. He puts it in the fourth end. Ozzy Hansen around to Engi. He tips it. Muskies set it up. No one on the right wing side. Compton's gonna get there first. He backhands it out across the line. 2.30 to play. Max Hansen sends it in deep and then races in after it against Perron. He gets there first, centering pass, and the Broncos clear it to safety. Mosbeck back for it to Max Hansen. He'll bring it to center. Hansen sends it in deep. He'll chase in again after it. Johnston slams it off the boards and down the ice. Icing to be called against the Broncos with 2.02 left in the third. So we came into this period with just two goals having been scored. We've had five scored here already in the third. Muskie's breaking a 1-1 tie on goals by Blake Krieger and then Clyde LaPlante to take a 3-1 lead. And the Muskies calling timeout to try and set up a comeback attempt here. But the Broncos responding. Jake Perron on the power play. Everett Chevalier 20 seconds after that. And then Parker Garrow with 4.22 remaining again on the power play to give the Broncos a 4-3 lead. We've got a little bit of everything tonight. Eight Bronco power plays. Muskie's power play has gone 0 for 4, while the Broncos are 2 for 8. We've had a Broncos spectator kicked out of the game. We've had a bench miner 
to the Broncos. We got a Broncos stick. Nearly end up in the rafters with the help of some gentle persuasion by a musky checker. It has been an absolutely frenetic pace to this game tonight. And we go, still got 2.02 to go. Do the Muskies have it in them to mount the comeback? They've been the team ahead the whole night. Now it's the Muskies trying to come back from behind. Last time these two teams met was in Kenora on December 6th. Scores! And the Broncos may have just salted it away. The long bomb, no doubter. Parker Garrow gets his second of the period, his second in a row, onto the empty net. And the timeout does not, does not work in the Muskies' favor as Garrow, the empty netter, unassisted at 17.05, or 17.08. And Beaver Bray now leads 5-3. And they are a minute 37 away from handing the Muskies their first regulation loss of the Norwasa season. Freezing with the puck. He sends it, tries to get it in deep. Are they gonna pull a coin again? It doesn't look like he's making a motion toward the bench. We'll see if the Muskies can get possession deep in the zone. See if Chris Sinclair will call for a coin to come to the bench. LaPlante. Works, trying to work it in. He can't do it. Broncos will get it. Now they'll send it down the ice, and it's going to be icing against the Broncos. Will that give Sinclair the chance to pull a coin? Will he pull a coin? It does not look like it. A coin staying put in the musky net with a minute six to go. And by the looks of things, the muskies have ran up the white flag, and now we've got a uh, timeout again. Muskie's calling the timeout, so maybe not. Sinclair calling his troops over. And they have 66 seconds to try and avoid having that first loss in the regulation loss column. But what a period for the Broncos. They give up the first two goals in the frame to trail three to one, and then get four goals in the span of three minutes and 45 seconds. Jake Perron, Everett Chevalier, Parker Garrow on the power play to give them their first lead, and then Garrow into the empty net. All the way from the Broncos end, and it is 5-3 Beaver Bray. I was saying before Garrow pocketed that empty netter, last time these two teams met, in conference play, the Muskies coming up with a 5-2 win in Kenora against the Broncos. That was back on December 6th. And it looked like it would be more of the same tonight early on. Ashton Beldeis is scoring a minute and two into the first period. And the Broncos carried the play in that first period, but only led 1-0. The Broncos, a much better second period, got the equalizer from Ty Naniska. The two teams coming into the third tied at one. Blake Krieger. And Clyde LaPlante giving the Muskies a 3-1 lead with seven and a half minutes to go. And it looked like it was all but done. But the Broncos fight back with four straight unanswered goals. And now a coin's out of the net again. Broncos almost looking for that empty net again. Now they're gonna get another chance at it. It's long shot, that's blocked. We got 48 seconds left. Broncos up by two. Muskies desperately trying to get into the Bronco end but they can't get there, it's intercepted. And here is Van de Wettering to put the final nail in the coffin with another empty netter with 37.2 seconds left here in the third. And the Beaver Bray Broncos indeed are gonna hand the Fort Francis Muskies their first regulation loss of the 2023-24 campaign. Oh. 
unassisted goal by Van de Wettering at 19-22. And the Broncos, five straight goals in the span of five minutes and 59 seconds have ripped the W away from the Muskies here tonight on the road. And they are gonna to improve to five and five on the season and drop the Muskies to seven, one, and one. Icing call coming up here against the Broncos, 20.1 seconds to play. And if you're a Muskies fan, you're looking down the road eight days from now the semifinal, the one game semifinal looming here at home. And the Muskies have to bring a better performance and a better effort in eight days time in both that semifinal and if they get past that in the championship final. And they know now they cannot take any team lightly as the Broncos have shown plenty of grit here this evening. And the Beaver Bray Broncos are gonna pull off the victory here in Fort Francis tonight as they celebrate with goaltender James Sinclair and they capture a 6-3 win over the Muskies. A terrific comeback effort by the Broncos as they score five unanswered goals in the final six and a half minutes of the contest to turn a 3-1 deficit into a 6-3 win. And the Muskies taste defeat in regulation for the first time in the Norwasa season. Their mark will fall to 7-1-1. One, and, one. and the Broncos will finish the regular season with a 5-5 five and five record. And we'll see if that'll be good enough to nail down third place ahead of the Dryden Eagles. If so, that'll mean a two versus three matchup most likely next Friday afternoon here in Fort Francis between the second seeded Red Lake Rams and the third seeded Broncos. And the Muskies will play either the Dryden Eagles or the Sioux North Warriors. We'll find out who finishes fourth to set up that semifinal. That'll be next Friday at 7.15 here at the Ice for Kids. But full credit to the visitors tonight. An absolutely gritty effort by the road team. And they come back and upset the home, the home side Muskies to pick up the two points here this evening. Muskies next game, there will be the regular season finale next Tuesday. That'll be here in Fort Francis. Not sure if it'll be Ice for Kids or 52 Canadians Arena at this point but they'll be hosting the St. Thomas Aquinas Saints from Kenora in that one. And then the Norwasa playoffs next Friday, all here at the Ice for Kids Arena, Friday and Saturday. Friday, the semifinals. Saturday, the championship finals in both girls and boys hockey. That'll do it for us here tonight from the Ice for Kids Arena. Your final score, the Beaver Bray Broncos six, the Fort Francis Muskies three, I'm Joey Payer. Thank you so much for tuning in to Musky Boys Hockey here on Home TV, brought to you by Homeland Financial. We'll talk to you again next time.